So to summarize the basic changes that were introduced in the fifth edition of the WHO, if you will see, with regards to the thyroid tumor, so they are divided under, under three headings, benign lesions, low risk neoplasm and malignant thyroid neoplasm. Now benign lesions previously only used to have thyroid adenoma, but now since the, we cannot say whether a colloid goiter or a multinodular goiter or a multinodular hyperplasia, whether these are only non-neoplastic because some of these benign or some of these non-neoplastic entities like colloid goiter, they were seen to have, uh, you know, molecularly, they were seen to have neopl neoplastic or monoclonal lesion. So, they were, uh, you know, many of these, uh, you know, benign or non-neoplastic entities were, were shown to have a neoplastic component. Therefore, these entities were labeled as thyroid follicular nodular disease because with surety, without molecular profiling, we cannot say that a colloid goiter is completely non-neoplastic. Okay. Similarly, a new entity was introduced that is the follicular thyroid adenoma with papillary architecture. It was there in the fourth edition, but now it is now placed under the benign lesion because the risk is very, very less and oncocytic adenoma has been introduced. So, these are the four entities making up the benign lesion. Then the low risk neoplasm, okay, they are containing NIFTP, okay, uh, for the tumor of uncertain malignant potential, WTUMP, okay, both these are there now and hyalinizing trabecular thyroid tumor. So, all these entities were present previously, but now they are grouped under the heading of low risk uh, neoplasm. Then, under the malignant thyroid neoplasm, we are having certain entities which are very well differentiated like the follicular thyroid carcinoma, papillary thyroid carcinoma and oncocytic carcinoma of the thyroid. Okay. Now, as you remember, we are having the follicular variant of papillary thyroid carcinoma and there are two types of follicular variant. One is the encapsulated variety and another one is the infiltrative variety. The encapsulated variety, they behave more like the follicular thyroid carcinoma. So, they are ras like uh, a tumor and they are more in line with the follicular thyroid carcinoma whereas the infiltrative variety of follicular variant, they behave more like the papillary thyroid carcinoma. So, they are under the subtypes. So, what are the important subtypes that we see? Infiltrative, follicular, tall cell, columnar, hobnail, solid, diffuse, sclerosing, warthin and oncocytic variety. Now, very important, previously the cribriform molecular uh, morular variety of PTC, they are now shown not to be under the heading of PTC because uh, they are not having any, you know, expression of PAX8 or uh, TTF1 or thyroglobulin. So, they are now placed under a new heading of thyroid tumor of uncertain histogenesis, okay. Again, very importantly, previously we were having the term poorly differentiated thyroid carcinoma, but now the new term is high grade thyroid neoplasm which are non anaplastic okay so under this high grade tumor we are having two entities so a new term has been introduced that is the differentiated high grade thyroid carcinoma now, previously any tumor which was not falling under the heading of follicular oncocytic or papillary they were not showing any of these features yet they were having high grade features we were calling them as poorly differentiated thyroid carcinoma but for example there are also uh, certain tumors which are very well differentiated follicular oncocytic papillary but they are also showing high grade features so they were termed uh, they were now uh, you know they were now placed under a new category that is the differentiated high grade thyroid carcinoma and both of these are now placed under high grade thyroid neoplasm which are non anaplastic okay then we are also having the anaplastic thyroid carcinoma. One new thing is that that squamous cell carcinoma now comes under the uh, heading of anaplastic thyroid carcinoma only. Again, the thyroid tumor of salivary gland origin contains two part mucoepidermoid and a newly uh, introduced that is the secretory uh, carcinoma. Okay, and very very importantly, uh, a tumor of uncertain histogenesis wherein the the cribriform morular variant as well as the sclerosing mucoepidermoid carcinoma with the eosinophilia. These are the two entities under this heading. So with this, we have completed the WHO 2022 fifth edition update of thyroid neoplasm. Thank you very much. Myself, Dr. Jibran Ahmad presents to you Simply Pathology and today we are back with an important session. Today we are going to read about the WHO 5th edition of thyroid tumor update and there is a major update in the classification of the thyroid tumors which is very very important for this year's exam. So please uh, stay tuned till the end of the lecture. We are going to discuss many many important points. So let us start this lecture without wasting any more time. So first of all I would like to start and I would like to kick off with the 4th edition WHO classification of tumors of the thyroid. Now, what is very important that you have to know what is the classification of the fourth edition so as to appreciate all the changes that have been done in the fifth edition. 
So what do you see that under the benign heading, only one entity is there under adenoma, okay, in the fourth edition. But in the fifth edition, there are further changes. I will discuss about that, okay. Then if you see these tumors, okay, they are just lying down separately, okay, means they do not have any, you know, these are some low risk tumors, okay, and they have been categorized as low risk under the fifth edition. Similarly, if you look at the malignancies, they are separately placed, okay, so there is no uh, you know, a single heading as a, as in there is no heading for malignancy as we can appreciate over here. So, just let me show you uh, over here. This is the latest classification that is the WHO fifth edition classification. So, as you can see over here, the classification is based on the cell of origin. So, we are having follicular cell derived neoplasm and we are having thyroid C cell derived carcinomas. Okay. So, very importantly, there is a clear cut, uh, you know, demarcation. So, there are benign tumors, there are low risk neoplasms, there are malignant neoplasms. So, such division or such differentiation was not present in the fourth edition. Okay, the entities were lying just like that. Okay, so we did not have any such demarcation like benign, low risk, and malignant. Over here in the fifth edition, we are having clear cut, you know, benign, low risk, and malignant neoplasms. Okay, so very importantly, as I told you. In the fourth edition, there was only a single entity under the adenoma heading, but over here you can see that there are four main headings. What is the importance? What are these new entities? We will discuss about them in the later half of the video. Just I am going to name them. So, under the benign heading, we are having thyroid follicular nodular disease, follicular thyroid adenoma, follicular thyroid adenoma, which are having papillary feature and oncocytic adenoma of thyroid. So, these are the entities under the benign tumors. Okay, then we are having low risk neoplasm. Now, very importantly, these entities that we can appreciate over here, okay, these were termed as low risk, okay. So, even they, uh, you know, even they were showing features of, uh, you know, capsular and uh, vascular invasion, even then the risk of metastasis was very low and therefore to avoid over treatment in such cases, we are naming them at low risk cases. So, what are the entities under that? We are having NIF-TP that is non-invasive follicular thyroid neoplasm with papillary like nuclear feature are tumors of uncertain malignant potential. Now, this is having both, okay. It is having follicular tumors of uncertain malignant potential and also, you know, well differentiated tumors of uncertain malignant potential as we have seen over here. So, there are two entities, follicular tumor of uncertain malignant potential and well differentiated tumor of uncertain malignant potential. So, it is under now one heading only that is thyroid tumors of uncertain malignant potential and we also have hyalinizing fabricular tumor. So, what are these we will discuss later on, okay. Now, under the malignant neoplasm, now previously there were, you know, different groups of papillary, then follicular, then Hartel cell, okay. So, if you see over here, all these things are now into a single malignant neoplasm group. So, the very important changes that you will see we are having follicular thyroid carcinoma, okay. After that, we are having a follicular variant of papillary thyroid carcinoma. Now, remember the follicular variant, the follicular variant of papillary thyroid carcinoma, it is having two types, okay. One is your encapsulated invasive encapsulated variety and another one is your infiltrative variety. So, remember this variant, the encapsulated variant is uh, you know, very much similar to the follicular thyroid carcinoma. So, this is the invasive encapsulated follicular variant of papillary thyroid carcinoma, which behaves very much like the follicular thyroid carcinoma, okay. Whereas, whereas the infiltrative variety of the follicular variant of papillary thyroid carcinoma, they are like the papillary thyroid carcinoma. So, they are one of the subtypes of papillary thyroid carcinoma. We will discuss in details later on, so don't worry on that front. Again, we are having oncocytic carcinoma of thyroid. Now, remember, previously they were using the term Hartzell cell. That term is discouraged. Instead, we should use the term oncocytic, okay. So, that is why we are now saying oncocytic carcinoma of the thyroid, okay. Again, uh, previously we used to have only poorly differentiated thyroid carcinoma, okay, which were having high grade features. But now we see that certain well differentiated thyroid carcinomas, they are also having high grade features and for that, the WHO has introduced an intermediate risk category that is the uh, 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 differentiated high grade follicular tumor, uh, uh, follicular cell derived tumors. Okay. So, both the differentiated high grade follicular cell derived tumor as well as the poorly differentiated thyroid carcinomas are under this new entity that is the high grade follicular cell derived non anaplastic thyroid carcinoma and then we are having anaplastic thyroid carcinoma. So, let me show you and compare over here. So, all these entities now the subtypes are not mentioned. So, they are under the malignant category. 
papillary thyroid carcinoma, follicular thyroid carcinoma, then the encapsulated you know, variety of the uh, follicular variant of papillary thyroid carcinoma. Now, Hartzell term is not used, only oncocytic term is used. Remember, anaplastic is there, but poorly differentiated thyroid carcinoma is under a new heading. Okay, it is under a new heading. And what is that new heading called? Uh, the new heading is called as high grade follicular cell derived non anaplastic thyroid carcin uh, carcinoma that is now having poorly differentiated as well as an intermediate category that has been released that is a differentiated high grade uh, thyroid tumors. Okay, we will discuss about them, uh, them in details. Right now, I am just taking you through the more important changes. Then we are having the medullary thyroid carcinoma over here the only new change that is there that is the WHO grading has been introduced okay so to divide the medullary thyroid carcinoma into high grade and low grade because that affects the prognosis. Then we have the mixed medullary follicular cell derived carcinomas then we have salivary gland type carcinomas of the thyroid now very important mucoepidermoid was there before but secretory carcinoma has been introduced in this uh, particular uh, you know addition of WHO. Then uh, previously we used to have an entity sclerosing mucoepidermoid carcinoma with eosinophilia but right now two entities are there and both of them they are having uncertain histogenesis. So they are under the heading of thyroid tumor of uncertain histogenesis that is sclerosing mucoepidermoid carcinoma with eosinophilia and cribriform modular thyroid carcinoma. Okay. Apart from that previously we were also having uh, thymic tumors, <coughs> thymoma or spindle epithelial uh, 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 tumor with, th with thymus like uh, L -L elements also called as settle and we were having intrathyroid thymic carcinoma but previously they were separate entities but now they are grouped under the thymic tumors within the thyroid okay so the origin is very clear the origin is from the thyroid so they are called as thymic tumors within the thyroid okay all these three are now under a separate heading so if you can appreciate over here yes so previously if you see they were not under the same heading so if you see the mucoepidermal carcinoma plus secretory carcinoma they are now under the salivary gland type tumors and the sclerosing mucoepidermal carcinoma along with the cribriform morular variant they are under the tumors of uncertain histogenesis that has been introduced the very important one important thing that we have to remember previously squamous cell carcinoma was regarded as a separate entity from anaplastic but now both of them share common molecular profile so they are under the same heading so just let me highlight that if you see over over here very importantly that under the anaplastic thyroid carcinoma only the squamous cell carcinoma has been introduced again a new entity embryonal thyroid neoplasm thyroblastoma has been introduced now this is the uh, who fifth edition classification of the thyroid tumors now you will ask me that sir in the fourth edition we were also having mesenchymal tumors hematolymphoid tumors germ cell tumors and secondary tumors where are they in the new edition now they are not specific for the thyroid but they are as a common group under the, uh, in the tumors arising from the endocrine organs. Okay, So, these are common across the endocrine tumors arising in various endocrine organs. So, they are a common group. They are not specific for thyroid only. Okay, So, they are discussed separately under the heading of WHO tumors of the endocrine organ. Okay, So, with this uh, basic uh, you know, uh, uh, background, we are going to start our discussion. So this is a very very important chart that we will discuss okay at the end okay because I have already given you the broad headings and we will just summarize the entire thing in the end so stay tuned till the end of the video. So the first so as we can see that there are three group of lesions benign lesions, low risk neoplasms and malignant thyroid neoplasm. So there are three important groups under the 2022 WHO classification of thyroid neoplasm or the WHO fifth edition okay. So, very importantly, we are first going to discuss the benign follicular cell derived thyroid tumor. So, we are going to see the benign entities. So, as you can appreciate previously only thyroid adenoma was there, but now certain other entities has been introduced. So, this is under the fourth edition and this is under the fifth edition. So, under the fifth edition, you can see three other, uh, 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 you know, uh, things have been introduced. Okay. So, let us see what are these entities. So, very importantly, the first thing that we have to understand that majority or uh, you know of the benign lesions, they have simple micro or macro follicular architecture and they are expressing RAS like molecular profile. Now, clinically, any enlargement of the thyroid gland is termed goiter as we know that a finding that is often associated with not only non-neoplastic disorder but also in various neoplastic disorders. So, goiter often presents as a nodular swelling and rarely they can present as a diffuse but mostly they are as a nodular and we are using the term colloid nodule or colloid goiter, multinodular goiter or adenomatous goiter and multinodular hyperplasia 
so these are the terms that are often used by the pathologist and these are clinical terms okay they are not reflective of the underlying pathology okay so they do not say whether the particular lesion or the particular goitrous swelling whether it is neoplastic or non neoplastic so when the molecular analysis were done for all these you know uh, goitrous swelling it was seen that a good proportion of these goitrous nodules they were monoclonal and they represented neoplastic proliferation therefore it is impossible to distinguish between non neoplastic and benign neoplastic follicular neoplasms okay or the adenomas just on the basis of morphology alone so any kind of goitrous swelling that you are seeing okay like colloid goiter or you are looking at multinodular goiter or adenomatous goiter so usually the pathologist when they are using this term we are basically implying a non neoplastic nature but basically when the molecular studies were done it was seen okay it was seen that basically that these were having both uh, monoclonal as well as non monoclonal entity that means they were both neoplastic as well as non neoplastic therefore an umbrella term of follicular nodular disease or fnd has been proposed in the latest who classification to above to avoid the above mentioned issue so that is why what the who has done so basically all the goitrous swelling the colloid goiter multinodular goiter that we see it need not necessarily be only non neoplastic okay it is encompassing both neoplastic as well as non neoplastic lesions okay so always remember that any uh, you know goitrous swelling that you are seeing it is not necessarily non neoplastic okay it can be neoplastic also and that is why to avoid such issues in the future we are just naming it as thyroid follicular nodular disease so you shouldn't label it as a colloid goiter you should label it as a thyroid follicular nodular disease because it might be be neoplastic or it can be non neoplastic as well because molecular only after molecular studies you can say the nature of the lesion okay follicular adenoma was already there before then we are having the follicular thyroid adenoma with papillary architecture so what is it let us see so in the 2017 who classification scheme of the thyroid uh, neoplasm follicular adenoma as i told you was the only entity included in the benign follicular cell derived tumor however in the fifth edition we are having more entities that i have already discussed like follicular adenoma with papillary architecture okay so this has been introduced in the uh, fifth edition in the classification so what is this what is the definition of this follicular adenoma with papillary architecture so again it is a well demarcated it is non invasive encapsulated tumor with an intra follicular so they have follicles but inside the follicles they are showing papillary pattern but very important thing that all the lesional cells or the tumor cells they lack the nuclear features of papillary thyroid carcinoma only papillary architecture is there but cytologically they are not having any feature of papillary thyroid carcinoma these tumors are often associated with autonomous hyperfunction and may therefore appear as hot nodules on radionucleotide scan and they also show that these tumors are showing certain mutations and alterations in, in tshr receptor ganas or ezh1 genes okay and basically these uh, mutations leads to activation of the pka or protein kinase a pathway now what is also seen that these tumors that is follicular adenoma with papillary architecture they might also occur in the setting of syndromes like mccune albright and carney complex syndrome and both of these are pka pathway related conditions driven by ganas and prkar1a mutations respectively moreover non functional follicular adenomas with papillary architecture can also harbor dicer1 mutations okay so the association between thyroid function and the related syndromes makes the distinction between these tumors clinically significant okay so remember one thing so this is about the follicular adenoma okay with papillary architecture okay follicular um, adenoma with papillary architecture then we are also introducing the oncocytic follicular adenoma under the heading of the benign neoplasm now for the diagnosis of oncocytic follicular adenoma more than 75% of the tumor cells should exhibit oncocytic features okay overall the oncocytic thyroid tumors represent a distinct entity of thyroid neoplasm supported by specific genetic alterations including mitochondrial dna mutations and increased copy number alterations okay so this is about the first group of disease that we can see thyroid follicular nodular disease follicular thyroid adenoma uh, follicular thyroid adenoma with papillary architecture and oncocytic adenoma of the thyroid so this is about the benign entities okay and remember we are no, no more using colloid goiter or multinodular goiter or multinodular hyperplasia because these lesions might be non neoplastic as well as neoplastic so better to label them as thyroid follicular nodular disease 
The next important group of disorder that we will see is the low risk follicular cell derived thyroid neoplasm. Low risk, okay. So, first of all, let us try and understand. So, this is what was there in the fourth edition. So, in the fourth edition, we used to have an other encapsulated follicular pattern thyroid tumors like we used to have tumors of uncertain malignant potential like follicular tumor or well differentiated tumor of uncertain malignant potential and we used to have NIF-TP, okay, NIF-TP that is non-invasive follicular thyroid neoplasm with papillary like nuclear feature and separately we used to have hyalinizing trabecular tumor. Now, very importantly, all these three entities together under the fifth edition, they are labeled as a low risk neoplasm that is a NIFTP thyroid tumors of uncertain malignant potential which is having both follicular tumor of uncertain malignant potential as well as it is having well differentiated tumor of uncertain malignant potential. The terms were also there in the fifth edition, uh, in the fourth edition also, okay. And we have hyalinizing trabecular tumor. So, they are now under the heading of low risk neoplasm. So, a category of low risk neoplasm has been created. Why? Because we want to bridge the gap between the benign and the malignant entities. So, the, these include neoplasms that have been reported to give rise to metastasis, but the incidence of spread is extremely low. The naming of a group of thyroid neoplasm as low risk was introduced in the fourth edition. So, in the fourth edition, they had introduced this term, but, but in the fifth edition, we have revolutionized this concept. How? Because we have introduced this low risk term in the classification itself. So, we have placed certain tumors under the low risk category only. So, rather than classify them as carcinoma, the designation tumor is intended to reduce the risk of overtreatment under such heading. And what are the entities we have already discussed? Okay, NIFTP is there, thyroid tumors of uncertain malignant potential is there, and hyalinizing trabecular tumor. So, we have already discussed, we have discussed uh, all these three terms. So, I am not repeating again. Now, collectively, when rendered, okay, in light of strict diagnostic criteria, these entities clinically, they behave more or less in a benign fashion and they do not require aggressive treatment modalities. That is why they are under the low risk category. Except for hyalinizing trabecular tumor, these tumors, they are mostly RAS driven. Now, just to give you one basic idea, all the follicular type tumors or the tumors with morphological pattern or follicular pattern is there, they are RAS driven, whereas all the papillary thyroid tumors, they are having BRAF B600E mutation, okay. So, basically, I am just letting you know, we will discuss about this again. So, that is why when you come across RAS driven and BRAF driven, they are just meaning to say, RAS driven means they are follicular type tumor and BRAF driven tumor, they are more uh, papillary thyroid tumors and they are, uh, you know, known to have bad prognosis. So, except for hyalinizing trabecular tumor, these newer tumors are mostly RAS driven and detection of any non-RAS like molecular signature like BRAF mutation or any high risk molecular alteration like P53 alteration or TERT promoter alteration, they will promote re-evaluation of the pathological features to exclude overt malignancy, okay. So, whatever molecular alterations you will see in these group of tumors, they will mostly be RAS driven. If you see any other like BRAF mutations or any high grade molecular alteration, then you should, you know, re-evaluate your histological findings. So, now I will go through individual entity and I am just going to tell you what they are. What is NIFTP? Again, it is a well demarcated or encapsulated non-invasive neoplasm completely follicular patterned with PTC related nuclear ATPR. So, they are having the PTC related nuclear ATPR but they lack high grade features of mitosis or necrosis. So, if you, if you compare it with the follicular neoplasm with papillary architecture over there, no nuclear feature of papillary thyroid carcinoma was there, but over here, some nuclear atypia is there. The only thing is that, that over here, high grade features are not there. This is how you differentiate between NIFTP and the benign neoplasm that is the follicular uh, adenoma which are having papillary architecture. Over there, only architecture was there, but over here, basically you are having follicular pattern with PTC like nuclear ATP, but no high grade features and no invasive uh, features are there. Most of them, they are RAS driven or they can exhibit codon 601 BRAF mutation. But remember, BRAF V600E mutation is never present over here. And if they are present, then they will exclude a diagnosis of NIFTP. You cannot make a diagnosis of NIFTP if BRAF V600E mutation is present. A subset of NIFTP all can also uh, harbor the Pax and PAPRG gene fusion. Now, in the fifth edition of WHO, the diagnostic term NIFTP can be applied to lesions which are less than 1 centimeter, provided they are not having BRAF V600 mutation and provided uh, lesions which are not less than 0.3, 
okay and uh, they can also be labeled as oncocytic lesion niftp can be labeled as oncocytic niftp provided more than 75 percent are having oncocytic cells fulfilling strict diagnostic criteria now thyroid tumors of uncertain malignant potential that is the second entity these are rare lesions in which histological confirmation of capsular or vascular invasion is equivocal so you can see capsular and vascular invasion but they should not have any uh, you know they should not have any they require extensive uh, you know uh, uh, microscopic assessment of the entire capsular or tumor interface as even a single focus of invasive focus would disqualify the diagnosis okay so very important that they are equivocal means uh, uh, you are not very sure ab about the capsular or the vascular invasion that is why they are uncertain malignant potential then we are having HTT that is hyalinizing trabecular tumors now first of all these are follicular cell derived thyroid neoplasms with PTC related nuclear atypia okay and they have a trabecular growth pattern so trabecular growth pattern with PTC related nuclear atypia and they show extracellular hyaline matrix so these are certain important pathological features that you will see and molecularly they show GLIS1 and GLIS3 fusion so PAX8 GLIS1 fusion and PAX8 GLIS3 fusions are seen molecularly metastasis associated with HTT have only been reported in single historic case and never in HTT with verified GLIS fusion so while molecular testing will confirm the diagnosis the entity is well known to exhibit membranous ki 67 immunoreactivity if uh, we stained with mib1 clone at a room temperature so very very important certain criteria are there that you should follow okay so for niftp as you can see what is the criteria for uncertain malignant potential the capsular or vascular invasion is not very sure of it is equivocal okay so it requires uh, you know uh, further evaluation and HTTs, they are having PTC related nuclear ATP, a hyaline matrix, and tabular growth pattern, and certain molecular alterations are very specific for them. The very good thing about these tumors are all of them being malignant, but they do not show metastasis or high grade features. So they are having very good prognosis. That is why they are under the heading of low grade follicular cell derived neoplasm. Now we are going to discuss about the malignancies of the thyroid follicular cells. Okay, so before I go into the malignancies, just let me, you know, make you understand. Previously, all these malignancies, they were under separate headings, okay, like this, okay. So, they were, they were discussed separately. But now, if you see, they are discussed based first on the cell from where they are derived, either they are follicular cell derived or they are thyroid C cell derived. Then, over here, there is a demarcation into benign, low risk and malignant. Now, under the malignant heading, as I can show you, all of them are placed under a single entity as I have already spoken about this before. And then under the thyroid C cell derived carcinoma, we are having the medullary thyroid carcinoma. So, with this thing in our mind, let us try and understand. So, very important, malignancies of thyroid follicular cells, they have been characterized at the molecular level. And it is clear that majority of the well, see the term I am using is well differentiated. Well differentiated means those either showing follicular pattern or oncocytic pattern or papillary thyroid carcinoma like pattern this is the meaning of well differentiated these well differentiated tumors are falling into one of the two molecular categories so the first group of tumors if you see they are predominantly expansile but they are encapsulated means they are expansile they are growing in this pattern they are expansile in nature they are not infiltrated infiltrative means when they are growing and they are infiltrating like this okay so, majority of the tumors which are predominantly expansile but not infiltrative, they are often with clear encapsulation. They are having, this, so they seem like they are well encapsulated, okay? And they are having predominantly a follicular architecture. And they are classified, they are called as RAS-like tumors, okay? Because of the high incidence of RAS mutations in these group of tumors. They have no nuclear atypia. Okay, you can call them as follicular carcinoma or they may have mild to moderate nuclear convolution or clearing of the nucleoplasm. In that case, we are calling them as encapsulated follicular variant of papillary thyroid carcinoma. So, understood the first group of tumors, even the oncocytic group of tumors, these group of tumors, they are having expansile growth. They seem like they are encapsulated. They are having RAS mutations. They are either having no nuclear atypia. That, so, they are termed as follicular uh, carcinoma or they might have oncocytic features. So, they will be called oncocytic carcinoma or they might have mild to moderate nuclear features of papillary thyroid carcinoma. In that case, they are called as encapsulated follicular variant of papillary thyroid carcinoma. So, all these three group of tumors, 
दे आर द रास ड्रिवेन ट्यूमर सो मॉलिकुलरली दे आर ट्यूमर शोइंग रास म्यूटेशन तो दिस इज द फर्स्ट ग्रुप ऑफ ट्यूमर द सेकेंड ग्रुप ऑफ ट्यूमर आर दो विच आर हैविंग आर्किटेक्चरल एबनॉमलिटीज इंक्लूडिंग पैपलरी एंड और इनफिल्ट्रेटिव ग्रोथ दे हैव अ हाई फ्रिक्वेंसी ऑफ ब्राफ बी सिक्स हंड्रेड ई म्यूटेशन एंड दे आर डेजिग्नेटेड एज ब्राफ बी सिक्स हंड्रेड ई लाइट ट्यूमर्स now these tumors they have a florid amount of nuclear atpia so the nuclear atpia is quite marked the hallmark which is a hallmark of papillary carcinoma and they frequently contain samoma bodies as well while still histologically differentiated the family of papillary thyroid carcinomas are less differentiated at the molecular level when we compare it with follicular carcinoma or the encapsulated follicular variant of papillary thyroid carcinoma so remember there are two groups of tumor one which is uh, expansile in nature showing ras like mutations they are called uh, as the follicular or or encapsulated follicular variant of tumor then we are having those group of tumors which are having florid a very clear cut nuclear atypia and they are having papillary architecture they also have braf like mutations and they are infiltrative in nature they are called as ptc like tumors okay now remember now one thing you have to understand although these are well differentiated tumors both these group are well differentiated but both these carcinomas that is the ras like and braf v600e like carcinomas they can also have high grade features that is tumor necrosis and mitotic activity okay which correlates with acquisition of additional molecular events conferring more aggressive behavior and such group of tumors they will not come under poorly differentiated so these are well differentiated tumors sometimes they will acquire more uh, you know additional molecular you know alterations and they will become aggressive and such tumors are regarded as the intermediate grade neoplasm called as differentiated high grade follicular cell derived neoplasm okay which is a new entity that has been introduced they are talking about that only over here thus the progression and this progression of a differentiated tumor towards poorly differentiated or towards uh, you know uh, differentiated high grade it is associated with acquisition of secondary genetic events like mutations in tp53 pic3a p10 or tert promoter gene mutation they give rise to high grade follicular cell derived carcinoma that may be ras like such as most poorly differentiated uh, insular thyroid carcinomas or braf like that is high grade papillary carcinomas okay thus a prognostically relevant classification of thyroid carcinoma of follicular cells must take into account the differentiation and the grade based on the mitotic activity and necrosis now oncocytic neoplasms they can have genetic alterations which are characteristic of their corresponding non oncocytic neoplasm for example we are having oncocytic papillary or oncocytic follicular so in case we are having oncocytic papillary carcinoma they may have braf v600e mutation but in addition they are also having mutations of complex you know mitochondrial genes that typically encode for oxidative phosphorylation complex one subunits that are the defining molecular features so oncocytic neoplasm they are having the molecular features of oncocytic neoplasm along with that whatever uh, you know neoplasm they are uh, along for example if it is oncocytic follicular or oncocytic papillary so whatever is for, for example if it is follicular then ras like mutations will be there if there is papillary then papillary like braf like mutation is there along with that whatever mutations is is causing oncocytosis like mutations in the mitochondrial gene they are also present so in this classification a separate discussion of oncocytic follicular carcinomas is also there now the most aggressive follicular derived carcinoma if you see is anaplastic thyroid carcinoma which is a rapidly lethal malignancy now these tumors are defined are by definition they are undifferentiated and therefore represent a diagnosis of exclusion in most cases the presence of differentiated precursor lesion and mutation that are characteristic of thyroid carcinoma such as ras or braf v600e mutation combined with secondary genetic events usually a tp53 or a tert promoter mutation provides evidence for the diagnosis now remember one another very important change is that previously squamous cell carcinoma was was a separate entity but now it is regarded as a subtype of anaplastic thyroid carcinoma okay so as we have already discussed these changes okay now we are going to discuss about the follicular thyroid carcinoma and the follicular variant of papillary thyroid carcinoma now remember this follicular variant this is encapsulated variety of follicular variant of papillary thyroid carcinoma so the follicular thyroid carcinomas if you see they are mostly ras driven 